you ever lick his finger and like rub your face to get stuff off your face? Oh man, my dad used to do that. I hated it. Like when we were going to church, yeah. when I was real little, and I'm in the car, he would, oh, you got something on your face. Like, <laughs> like, that has nothing to do with anything. All right. Okay. Back to the class. Definition essay. So what two things, what two things do you need to remember when writing a definition essay? What two parts of it? Annotation and context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the most useful thing I think hopefully you learned yesterday. When you write this kind of essay, you take a word or a topic and you need to think about its literal meaning and then its, its figurative meaning or its connotative meaning. And that, it lets you look at it from different angles, okay? Um, so we're going we're gonna to talk about, again, how to outline a definition essay. I'm going to give you a nice little piece of paper with an outline and what it should look like for this kind of an essay. And we're just going to kind of stick to that format um, so that we're all on the same page and nobody gets confused, okay? So that'll, I think that will help make it easier to understand. Uh, then we're going to look at an um, extended definition essay called What is Love? I know all you single guys are excited. You will leave this class today understanding what true love is all about. Okay? All right. And then finally, we'll do a short writing. I know. Sounds fun, doesn't it? So let's get started. Um, and let me give you the outline first. Of course, some of this is going to be review from yesterday, but this is actually, I think, super helpful. And I have to give credit to Emily. She has shared from her treasure of English information to give me this. Alright. So we're all looking at the same thing now. And let's see. Arif, will you read the first paragraph? When writing a definition essay, you must consider all aspects of the word you are de defining, including both the denotative, den denotative and connotative meaning. You do have some flexibility in how to organize your essay, and you can be a little more creative, but it should still be clearly organized in the correct essay format. Here is an outline to help you organize your ideas for your essay on Monday. Good, okay. And by the way, we do uh, have an essay we're going to write on Monday. We're going to write the first draft of essay one, okay? And this is the format. Again, it's the same in the sense that it has an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, okay? But hopefully this will give you a little bit better idea of what to put in each section, okay? So look at, uh, number one, you have your introduction. We talked about this already. You want to have your hook and or background information right in the introduction, okay? And then it gives some nice suggestions. Nasita, will you read point I for the hook? For the post, you can ask questions, make assumptions, statements, or even start with the negotiated meanings of the word. The way you start will depend on who the post, so you feel to be creative. Cool. All right. So it depends on what you're trying to do, um, but you can use a range of possibilities when you start your introduction. You could ask a question, surprise your reader with a surprising statement. You could even just give the definition, especially if, like yesterday, you pick a word from your language, right, that maybe none of us have ever heard of before. So it might be nice to start right off telling us what the word actually means. Uh, all right, read point double I. Okay. For the background information again, you can see... A, a, you can... You can use, sorry. You can use a variety of strategies. Any... Uh, any, any antidote. Antidote. What's an antidote, by the way? It's like story. Uh, story. 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 General to specific. <coughs> History of the world or idea, etc. The reading, writing, book has some good examples if you still have this. Good, if you still have it. Um, so listen, again, in the background information, in the introduction, just some ideas. Be creative, man, but you could use a short story. I always think that if you're in the story, uh, for this kind of an essay, it's fantastic. Personal stories are always nice. 
uh, from your experience. General to specific. Again, just remember you can start with the big idea and then get uh, more specific with it. And then you could also talk about the history of the word. Some of these words are interesting. English steals words from other languages. For example, love. Um, I don't know if you know this, but our concept of love in English, we steal a lot of the different connotations of love, like romantic love, friendship love, um, from the Greek language and the Greek culture. In the New Testament, in the Bible actually, there are different Greek words for love. Okay? And they each had a different idea. So we kind of, like romantic love, okay, is one word. Erotic love is another word. Friendship love is another word in the Greek language. Uh, the city of Philadelphia. Do you know what Philadelphia means? Phil Philo? Philo? Phil love? Uh, it means the city of brotherly love. Yeah. Because the Greek word philo means brotherly love. It's the idea of brotherly love. So anyway, the history behind a word can be fascinating. When you look a word up in the dictionary, it will also give you the etymology or the history down at the bottom. Not a lot, but you can do some research and find out the history behind a word, even a little bit, in a, in a normal dictionary. Okay? The thesis statement. Islam, read what we should have in our thesis statement. Your thesis should uh, clearly start the uh, word you will be defining and the different uh, connotation or uh, denotations you will be discussing. Yeah. Hey, listen, sometimes it's easier to write a thesis statement after you brainstorm and organize your thoughts because you don't know where you're going until you know where you're going. Ooh, did you catch that? that was... mm -hmm. You don't know where you're going until you know where you're going, right? So brainstorm and think about everything, throw it all out there, get it on something, right? Paper, however you do that, and then organize your ideas. Look for categories that go together. And then once you have your categories, then you can easily stick those meanings of the word or those categories of the word that you're going to be talking about in your thesis statement. Does that make sense? Good. Uh, let's get someone new. Yeah, read body, read body A. Hey, your body can go in uh, two different ways. One, a multi, multi, multiple, multiple quantitative means. One, if if you follow this pattern, each body paragraph will explain and support a different quantitative mean uh, of the of the word you are describing. For example, if you are describing that home can mean love, family, and peace, then each paragraph will explain one of those who with good support and good examples. Excellent. Does that make sense? I think that's helpful in organizing it. So again, remember, whatever your topic is or the word that you're looking at, think of it two categories, connotative, denotative, OK? And then what she's saying, it doesn't matter if you start with body paragraph one talking denotative or connotative, but the idea here is whichever one you pick, uh, you can use the different categories of connotative meaning for multiple paragraphs in the body. Does that make sense? Okay, read the second one. Two, compare and construct all of the denotative meaning. Another way to define, uh, to, to define your word is to do a compare and construct of the word. Typically, uh, you will compare and construct the... Uh, contrast. Co and construct and contrast the denotative meaning with the quantitative meanings. But it doesn't have that, that it doesn't it doesn't have to mean that. You could also compare and construct contrast uh, contrast with the different cultures, people, religions, religions, countries, etc. Say the word means. Good. Are you guys you okay so far? Yes. Alright, so the first idea, you okay? That's a hard word to say. <laughs> so the Anyway, she's, t she's giving you different ideas to break up the body paragraphs of your paper, okay? So, whatever you do, 
one of, one of your paragraphs should be connotative and all about the connotative meanings, and it could have more than one paragraph under that. And then the other one uh, should be about the denotative or the definition meaning of the word. And she suggests a nice idea. Uh, you could compare and contrast it with either one of the connotative ideas, or if you've already done that up above, then just compare it to different cultures. Maybe the, the idea in Saudi Arabia is much different, that, con that denotative idea, maybe it has a completely different idea in your country. So it's kind of another interesting way to add interesting information to your paper. All right, uh, Juan, will you read the conclusion? Your conclusion will be like any conclusion you have ever written. Uh, it should include the, the statement of the, of the thesis or main ideas, something to make the reader keep thinking about your essay. Production, reduction, final thought, or conclusion. Good. Everybody okay? All right, cool. Now, now that we've done that, I'd like to take a look at one more example of this kind of an essay. Yeah, 